What is integral Eucharistic formation? And how are we achieving this in our sister parishes? We will first explore communal worship or how does our common prayer experience lead to an understanding of how we connect to one another and to God? Second, what is the directory of catechesis and what does it tell us about liturgy and learning? And what, if anything, do we need to relearn about our worship and our preparation? Finally, for us to really make the liturgy a real part of our hearts and minds and parish life, we need to elevate our awareness of the real fact that how we worship dictates what we believe and how we live. Timothy O'Malley writes in Becoming Eucharistic People, Eucharistic catechesis is lacking because it is not meant exclusively for second graders receiving their first Holy Communion. Eucharistic catechesis is a lifelong project in which we learn to participate actively in the Mass, including receiving our Lord Jesus Christ in the Blessed Sacrament. O'Malley continues to teach that Eucharistic catechesis must be integral, that which is complete, essential, and fundamental. So how is our catechesis on the Mass and experiencing the Mass complete, essential, and fundamental? I think we've made great efforts. We know that one of the most meaningful ways to teach about the Mass is to have people experience the liturgy and then allow time afterwards to unpack their experience and learn from it. It must be an experience of joy and belonging first. When bringing others to an understanding of liturgy, it assumes a faith community that is willing to walk with those who seek a spiritual home. Jesus took time with people to allow them to ask questions, to understand his life and ministry. By example, he empowered them to pass on the faith once he was no longer with them. We have evidence from the fourth century pilgrim and author, Egeria, that those to be baptized were not given instructions on the ceremonies themselves. They participated in what was then called post-baptismal mystagogy. It was a time that they could express their feelings and thoughts following the rites. We still use that philosophy with those who journeyed together to become Catholic through the RCIA. RCIA stands for Rite, R-I-T-E, of Christian initiation of adults. Parents who present their children for the celebration of one of our first sacraments find our whole family process of learning to be very positive. They learn, some for the first time, to pray as a family, to pray with their children and make the Sunday Eucharist and service a priority in their family life. They realize that they are the first and the best teachers of the faith. Pope Francis writes in his pastoral letter, Amoris Laetitia, moments of family prayer and acts of devotion can be more powerful for evangelization, evangelization than any catechism, class, or sermon. So some questions we can think about are, what do you wish you better understood about the Eucharist or the celebration of the Mass? What questions or understandings do you struggle with? Did participation at Mass change my life? Do I struggle going to Mass? And why? Do I live the Eucharistic love that I receive in the Blessed Sacrament? The Directory for Catechesis highlights the close link between evangelization and catechesis. It underlines that every baptized person is responsible to find new ways of communicating the faith. Guided by the Directory, we realize that our knowledge of faith is not only about religion, but that we meet Christ and we bring Christ to others. We are not saved by facts or by knowing about the faith. We are saved by our experience of conversion, by knowing Christ, 
especially through nurturing community values. By integrating our private relationship with Jesus, with the communal celebration of the Mass, we cultivate active participation in faith and liturgy. The Directory of Catechesis tells us that the Church cultivates this active participation in five ways, and we have used these concepts to fashion our parish Faith for Life process. Teaching knowledge of the faith is important. When we do this, we gather adults, families, children, and teens who learn together. We strive to make the Sunday Mass the source and summit of our life in Christ, both participation and engaging in service. We form one for life in Christ. We initiate Catholics into the art of prayer it's essential that we provide various types of prayer to nurture the spirit and the soul. Fostering community life. Our philosophy is that building community happens when we learn and share faith together. We are a mission-driven people called to serve. Think about the catechesis in our parish across all ages and stages of life. Does our catechesis cultivate active participation as described in the Directory of Catechesis? Monsignor Romano Guardini was a key influence in my understanding of the liturgy. In his book, The Spirit of the Liturgy, published in 1918, is seen as a classic text of the emerging liturgical movement. He called relearning the liturgy quote, a forgotten way of doing things. As the bishops and priests were struggling with the changing ritual of the Mass in the 1960s, Father Guardini's insight brings the liturgy wars back to the heart of God's presence among us. He asks us whether we can, quote, take a posture of adoration, of loving contemplation, of joyful celebration, and union with Christ, in every dimension of our lives. Having read about the roles of memory, understanding, and desire, what insights have you about an adult approach to catechesis? And what implications could these ideas have for our sister parishes? The phrase lex orandi, lex credendi, literally means the law of prayer is the law of belief, or the way we worship is what we believe. Sometimes it's expanded to include the ultimate call of the Christian, lex orandi, lex credendi, lest vivendi. How we worship reflects what we believe and determines how we will live. Our communal prayer and worship is how we celebrate and understand our faith. Father Rick Hilgartner served as the executive director for the Secretariat of Divine Worship for our United States Conference of Catholic Bishops. He expresses beautifully how our communal worship is such a large part of nurturing the culture of integral Eucharistic formation. He writes, the liturgy engages belief in a way that simply thinking about God or studying the faith does not naturally do. In other words, in an act of worship, the faithful are in dialogue with God and are engaged in an active and personal relationship with Jesus Christ, and every individual member of the liturgical assembly is connected to one another as members of the mystical body of Christ in the Holy Spirit as they look together with hope for the salvation promised in the kingdom of heaven.